Now that we understand about atoms, next we're going to take it to the next level by looking at bonding between atoms to make molecules. So for example, if we have two hydrogen atoms that come together to make diatomic hydrogen, we can plot the energy as a function of the distance between the two hydrogen atoms. When the distance between the two atoms is infinitely far apart, the energy is given a value of zero. There's no positive attractive force between the two atoms and there's no repulsive force. As the distance gets smaller and smaller, when the atoms come closer and closer together, the energy becomes negative as the attractions win out because now the nucleus on one hydrogen atom has a new attraction with that electron of the other. And the same thing happens on the other hydrogen atom. Positive attracts negative, so as we bring these two atoms closer together, the energy decreases. Eventually it reaches a minimum, and then if we try to push the atoms closer, the energy shoots up quite rapidly because now we get repulsion between the nucleus of one atom with the nucleus of the other. If the two atoms are too close, the repulsions went out and the energy becomes too positive. So the lowest possible energy is down here at this particular distance. The two hydrogen atoms are sharing the two electrons between them and that makes a covalent bond. It doesn't have to be just two hydrogen atoms. We could do the same thing between one hydrogen and one fluorine atom. These would also end up sharing two electrons. However, they don't share them equally. You can measure how much one atom is attracted to the bonding electrons, and that's called the electronegativity. In general, elements at the top of the table and to the right have the highest electronegativity values. Fluorine is given a value of 4.0, which is the largest number of any electronegativity. Hydrogen is given a 2.1. The more electronegative means the electrons spend more time close to the fluorine. And so we can show this by writing a positive sign with the arrow extending towards the negative part. So in other words, we have two electrons between the hydrogen and the fluorine. But if we look at the fluorine pulling on those electrons, the electrons spend more of their time close to the fluorine as compared to the hydrogen. That makes a dipole. And we can measure the dipole by looking at the electronegativity values and subtracting and calculating the absolute value of the difference, which gives us a difference of 1.9. 1.9 falls at the upper range of what's called the polar covalent bonds. Nonpolar covalent means the electrons are completely equally shared. For example, between two hydrogen atoms. Neither one pulls on the electrons more strongly than the other. A bond between a hydrogen and fluorine is polar covalent. And if the electronegativity difference is greater than two, then we would call that bond ionic. And an ionic bond, positive to negative, such as sodium chloride. The chloride has pulled the electron so much that the sodium has a full positive charge and the chlorine has a full negative charge. One of the most common types of bonds in chemistry is between carbon and hydrogen. The electronegativity of carbon is a 2.5, hydrogen is a 2.1. The difference is 0 0.4, which means it's a nonpolar covalent bond. This is going to be something, to important, uh, something important to remember later on when we talk about molecular geometries. So when, when you see a chemical that's made up of all carbon-hydrogen bonds, 
keep in mind that each one of those bonds is nonpolar covalent.